know, there's a whole lot going on. You know, if you look around the world uh, and you see situations and circumstances, there's a lot of things going on in the Middle East. Uh, the big thing now is Syria, but there's many, many more things going on over there. There's possibility of, of uh, Iran making nuclear bombs and you got terrorists going around it. There's just so much I can never cover it all. You know, and not only that, but you come and you look in your own life. And there's always something happening. Just over the past few weeks, I've heard of so many that are have cancer or have some kind of disease or have some kind of problem or situation or sickness. There, there just seems to be so very much going on. And if you think on these things, the things that are going on in the world, the things that are going on in our country, the things that are going on in our lives, the things that are going on with our loved ones, and if you dwell on those things and you think on those things, it can really get you down. It can really eat you up. It can really get you depressed and sad and down. But we as Christians are not to be that way. We as Christians are not to let these things get to us. I know it's normal and it's natural for the flesh to get that way, but that's the flesh. When you're born again, you are supposed to, as the Bible says, walk in the Spirit. We are not to give heed to the things of the flesh. We are not to give in to things of the flesh. Now, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't be concerned and you shouldn't do what you can about situations and circumstances and things like that. That's not what I'm telling you. But the problem is I've talked to Christians over the past few weeks and I've heard on the radio and I've heard on TV in different places and people have said to me they're fearful. And the Bible says there would come a time when we would live in perilous times, and I believe we're living in that time. And the Bible says that men would run to and fro in fear. But we as Christians are not to do that. We as Christians are not to get into that. We as Christians are to walk in the Spirit, and when we walk in the Spirit, we walk above these things. We don't let them overcome us and defeat us and bring us down. Satan loves nothing better than you to get your mind all consumed over the things that are going on. Satan loves nothing better than to you for you to get a fearful heart because when you get that way, you quit trusting God and you quit depending on God and you're more susceptible to the things of Satan. It's going to hit you and it's going to come on you, but when it does, we need to go to the source. We need to realize that we have something better, that we can walk in a better path. Let me read you something here. This is in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. This is Paul writing. Book of Hebrews, chapter 12. I'm going to break in at verse 12. He says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Now, to me, that's a description of somebody who's depressed, somebody who's down, somebody who's troubled, somebody's in turmoil. He's saying, Lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let, her re but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. What's Paul saying here? Paul's talking about those who are down and, and are weary and are worn. If you get a picture in your mind of, of your spirit, I want you to look at the spiritual man because as I said, once we become a Christian, we are to walk in the spirit. You get a picture of that spiritual man with his hands down and his knees are feeble and, and, and he's beaten down and he's walking. And Paul's saying to be strong, to lift those things up, to walk in those things. He goes on here and he says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. <laughs> lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. If you're not careful and you walk in these things too long, if you walk in these things too often, if you let these things have too much of an influence over you, there's that danger. Paul warns them of that danger. He says, lest anything springing up make you fail of the grace of God, and lest it make you be defiled. Paul is warning us about that thing. Let me jump over here. This is in the book of Isaiah in chapter 35. Now, what he's talking about here, I'm sure you understand and I'm sure you know, he's talking about the kingdom of Christ. This is what I'm going to read to you, a description of the kingdom of Christ, but I want to tell you something. Christ said that the kingdom of God comes not with observation. He said, let me 
find it, read it to you so that you get it just right. This is in the book of Luke in chapter 17, uh, verses 20 and 21. I'm going to read the last part of that. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's what I want you to understand. That's what I want you to get a hold of. This description that I'm going to read over here in Isaiah is a description of the kingdom of God, of Christ's kingdom. But this was Christ that said the kingdom of God is within you. That's where his kingdom lies. That's where his kingdom dwells. You can walk in the kingdom every day. You don't have to wait until eternity. You don't have to wait until we get to heaven. You can walk in the kingdom every day. Remember, it was Christ that said the kingdom of God is within you. I want you to keep that in mind as I read this in Isaiah chapter 35, breaking in at verse 3. And I want you to notice this verse 3 it says almost the same thing that Paul said to the church. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I, I want to just recap here a minute before I get into this I want you to think about walking in the kingdom of God as a child of God Jesus said that we are to walk in the spirit Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you this that I just read you in Isaiah is a description of the kingdom of God this is what God wants you to walk in this is where God wants you to walk regardless of what's going on in the world regardless of what's happening regardless of what Satan throws at you regardless of what your flesh wants to try to bring up in you regardless of anything that goes on you can walk in this and that's where Christ wants you to walk but you've got to get it a hold of it and you've got to understand it as it said here and as Paul also wrote that I read to you he said strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble needs say to them that are of a fearful heart be strong and fear not for your God will come that's what the message is that I have for you this morning I believe that's what God wants us to get a hold of this morning Yes, there are some fearful and terrible and awful things going on in this world, but we as Christians walk in a different place. We as Christians have somebody who walks with us. We as Christians have somebody who watches over us. We as Christians have somebody who protects us. We don't have to be afraid what man can do. We don't have to worry about what's going on. Let me read you another thing. God just keeps putting these things on my mind. This is back in the book of Hebrews, the next chapter over in chapter 13. Listen to this. Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covenants, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. We are supposed to walk in love, and perfect love casts out fear. We are not to be feared. We are not to be all eat up with worry and concern and fear over what's going on and what's happening because when that happens as what we read to you here this morning when that happens there's a danger that you'll be pulled down that you'll be pulled away that you'll be defiled by getting so caught up in these things by worrying about what it is that man is doing we are to focus on what Christ's doing just like I read there to you at the end we can boldly say I will not fear what's going on I will not fear what man can do 
because Jesus has said, I'll be with you and I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And that's where we need to set our thoughts. That's where we need to set our mind. As I said, I, I have talked to people, I have talked to Christians who are scared to death about what's going on in this world. They're scared to death about what our government's going to do about it, about what this government's going to do, about what that government's going to do. I'm going to tell you something. It's all in the hands of God. I don't care what man purposes in his heart. I don't care what kind of plan he draws up. I don't care what he thinks he's going to do. God is in control, and what God says is going to happen is going to happen. You can sit and worry about it till your head explodes, and it ain't going to change a thing. God is going to have his way. God has a plan. As I told you, the Bible says, in the last days, perilous times will come. He said there will come a time when all these things are going to happen. But regardless of what is going to happen, he said, I will be with you. And I will walk with you. And you will not have to fear. That description that I read to you over there in Isaiah says that we can walk on a highway where no ravenous beast can come where nobody can come and harm us. Regardless of what's going on around us, we can walk on that highway. Let me read you a little bit of that again because I really want you to get a hold of this. He said that we are to strengthen ourselves, that we are to lift up our hands, we are to support our feeble knees, and we are to walk in love, not in fear. We are to walk on that highway that he said would be there. And that way of holiness is what he called it. They said there will be a highway there, and it shall be called the way of holiness, and the righteous shall walk thereon. And he gives a description of what that walk will be like. He said the parched ground will become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. <coughs> he said on that highway the lame man will leap as a heart, the tongue of the dumb shall sing, the wilderness shall break forth in song, and in water, and in flowers, and in all these things. This is where you can walk. Spiritually speaking, you can walk that every day that you exist on this planet. Spiritually speaking, you can walk on that path if you walk in the Lord. If you walk in the Spirit, you can walk on that path. And he gives us these promises. Listen to these promises. The unclean shall not pass over him. No lion shall be there. No ravenous beast shall go thereon. Nothing evil will be found there. Only the ransom of the Lord can walk on that highway. Regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what's happening, we can set our sights on that highway and we can walk on that path. What Paul said was to lift up the hands that hang down, support the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet. If you don't make those straight paths, he said, lest the lame be turned out of the way. If you don't walk on that path that Christ has set for you, if you try to walk through this world using the thoughts of the world and using the intelligence of the world and, and using the wisdom of the world. Paul warned us that there's a danger that we can be turned out of the way. You can get so caught up in that stuff. Let me tell you something. There was a time here not so very long ago I really got into all these current events and all these things that are going on and, and I got consumed with trying to get every bit of news I could get and all these things and, and find out what's what and what's behind the scenes and what these theories are and, and all this kind of stuff going on and I got so caught up in that, that that it was on my mind all the time and it took away from the time I should have been given to this. It took away from the time I should have been given to God. It stole joy from me. It stole peace from me because my mind were focused on all those things instead of focused on the things that God said that we should be focused on. What should be, we be focused on? Walking on that highway that he told us that we could walk on. And again, I, as I said, I'm not going to tell you that everything's going to go away and that you'll never hear about it and you'll never worry about it. It's going to come. And yes, we should be concerned. And the reason we should be concerned is because these are signs that the end is coming. These are signs that the return of Christ is drawing nigh. And because the return of Christ is drawing nigh, we are running out of time to win the loss. That's where our concern should be. Our concern should not be what this man's going to do or what that man's going to do or what this government's going to do or that government's going to do. Our concern should be winning the loss for Christ and bringing them in and bringing them onto that highway that they can walk on it too. That's where our focus should be. That's where our concern is going to be. Uh, as I told you, it's going to go on and it's going to go on and it's going to wax worse and worse and the world's just going to keep getting worse. And, and as I said over the past few weeks, I have heard so much about cancer and sickness and disease and all that's going to happen you can worry about it all you want you're not going to stop it we need to take it to